Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you four tips for tomorrow's racing. Now before we get stuck into them, quickly just want to apologise for not doing a video on today's racing. Uh, I was doing work yesterday at Sky Sports Racing and it was a long day and I just didn't have any time to study. So uh, yeah, that's why I didn't do a video on today's racing and I didn't have time to record last night either. So yeah, that's the reason why. But if you followed me on Twitter, you would have known that. And if you ever are wondering why I'm not posting, make sure you follow me on Twitter. I always give an update if I'm not going to be posting the video. So that is the place to uh, uh, follow me if you want updates on why I'm not uploading on my YouTube channel. Also as well, before we begin, if you want to listen to the latest episode of the In The Saddle podcast, which contains our thoughts and feelings for uh, the Scottish Grand National, we had a Scottish lineup this week, and that does include me as well. I recently did an Ancestry DNA test and turned out to be a third Scottish, so who knew? But yeah, I was in a steam company with the Scottish Sons, Jim Delahunt and um, trainer Katie Scott. So if you want to listen to it, I'll leave links in the description box below. We've got all the major podcast platforms covered, including the likes of uh, iTunes, uh, Spotify, SoundCloud. So whichever one takes your fancy, just hit one of the links in the description box below. So let's get on with it then. Four tips for tomorrow's racing. And I will mainly be focusing um, at the racing at air. But we're going to be starting tomorrow with my next best, which runs in the 140 at Wincanton, where I'm going here with a horse called Valser de Grumval for Kieran Gethins and Tom George. Now, at the current time recording, you can back this horse at 4-1 to one with Bet365. I'm going to recommend a one-point win bet here as my next best. Now, this horse, he doesn't really appeal on the bare form of things. He's a 12-year-old. He's been slipping down the weights. He hasn't won for a while. However, I thought his reappearance run after a short break last time out at Market Raisin was quite eye-catching. He wasn't too far beat behind a Matican who ran okay today at Bath in a decent uh, handicap chase there. Also as well, the second horse of Ollie Greenhalls that day, uh, he'd been uh, in some good form before that run. So it was actually not a bad race for the grade. It was a class four race. And this race he's going to be running in tomorrow at Wincanton is a step down in class. He's running in a class five handicap tomorrow. So easier competition, you think, in theory. Also as well, like I said, he has fallen down the weights but I think now he's at a level where he might be a little bit more comfortable uh, he actually started off uh, this season off a mark of 108 and he slipped down now to a rating of 89 and he showed last time out uh, signs of life and I think if he can just re replicate that effort tomorrow I think he can win a race of this nature Tom George's team haven't been in bad form in the last few weeks they had a win winner at Banger on D today and I think uh, with the drying out ground all the time that's going to suit him going this way round as well he's got a good record some of his best form has come going this way round he hasn't won for a few years now but I think uh, this is last chance saloon with him but I think it's a really weak race on paper and I just think there's lots to like about his chances tomorrow and if I said like he can replicate that run at market raising I think he'll uh, win this race so that's why he's going to be my next best of the day we then head obviously then up to air for where the main jumps racing is tomorrow I know there's a decent flat card at Newbury with some of the guineas trials but I didn't really think it was a punter friendly card tomorrow so um, that's why I haven't put anything up didn't have the balls to, to fancy anything but uh, yeah I'm focusing my attentions on air where we're going to be going with my extra tip in the 225 the Scottish champion hurdle and I thought Tommy's Oscar had a great each way chance here for Danny McMenamin and Anne Hamilton got a lot of time for this combination they've had a fantastic season and you currently back this horse at 8-1 with most firms and I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here now I love this horse I put him up uh, once or twice here on my YouTube channel this season I remember he uh, won for us um, I think it was at Musselboro when I put him up as a winning nap a few months ago but uh, ever since then I had always thought that this horse had a lot of talent and he's got a rating now of 138 after he won at Kelso in his last start beating a couple of nice rivals there including Christopher Wood who's no mug. I thought the raise he got that day was quite lenient by the handicapper considering the UK handicapper who knows what he does with his marks these days but I thought £6 was more than fair and I think 
off a mark of 138. He does still have a few pounds to play. I think he could be a low 140s horse, certainly. And this ground won't be a problem to him as well. And I just thought 8 to 1. The market had it slightly wrong here. I know Milkwood, obviously, with the Belfast banter form and some of his other stronger form earlier this season where he bumped into the likes of So Royale, does really read well on paper. But for me, I thought he was a little bit too short. Uh, in the betting and he might just had a hard enough race last time out so for me Tom, Tommy's Oscar it is he's going to be my extra tip he runs in the 225 Scottish champion hurdle and I thought 8 to 1 there he represents a good bit of value we then go to my nap of the day which runs in the 3 o'clock the future champion novices uh, chase a grade 2 and all eyes here are obviously going to be on all mankind he's uh, run about an even money shot at the time recording but I'm going to be swerving away from him because I don't think he'll win that race tomorrow I think he had too much of a hard race uh, in the Arkle uh, where he finished. I think it, was, it might be. I think it was in third. Uh, in the end, it was a blanket finish really for for the places in behind Chishkin because El Dorado Allen uh, ran on late. But I just thought he got into a real ding dong battle with Captain Guinness and they went like a bat out of hell. And I think that will really leave its mark on him. And he's been on the go quite a lot this season. And this race might be one step too far. Also as well, I'm slightly concerned about him going up in trip. We know he's a talented horse, you know. Uh, he, he likes going all, uh, all, from, all guns blazing from the front. To me, he's just a bit of a speedball. And I think he's really effective over two miles. And I would be concerned about him stepping up in trip. And I think there's a worthy average screen here in the form of Tamarok de Mafan. Now, I can't believe his current price... I think he should be nearly favourite for this race, or there, there shouldn't be so much between them in the betting. I thought uh, All Mankind should really be more of, um, my personal opinion, a 6-4 to four chance, and about the same for Tamarok to my fans. So I thought 15-8 to eight was a slightly uh, big price here in the context of this race, and that's why he's going to be my nap. Now, I'm going to recommend a one-point win bet there to Sean Byrne, and Paul Nichols, but this horse has had a lightly, um, a lot. Of, it's been lightly raced this season. He bumped into Shishkin at Christmas, but then his last win or his last run came at Kempton back in February when he won easy that day, taking the Pendle and uh, Grade Two chase there. It was a nice effort, and I just thought he, um, he would be saved for one of these kind of races that maybe. Aintree or Air. Paul Nichols looks like he's chosen the right one, in my personal opinion. You know, uh, he likes the ground, and even though there is ten pounds in, in ratings, he's coming in here fresh, and I do think he could be better than a one fifty chaser in time. This lad, Paul Nichols, likes to win this race as well. He's won it with uh, Secret Investor the last time it was run, and also as well a horse back in twenty sixteen called La Mercury. So he's got a good recent record in it, and I just think he's got a great chance. I think two and a half miles is definitely his bag as well. I think over two miles. He he maybe just lacks uh, the pace, but he has shown, obviously, some good form in his career. But I think two and a half miles will definitely be up his street. Sean Byrne as well. I think he's a really intelligent jockey in these kind of races. I remember he, he gave a horse of Evan Williams uh, a great ride um, when he picked up. I think it was the big breakaway. I can't remember the name of the horse now. But, uh, yeah, I think it could be a similar kind of race where he uh, sits in behind all mankind, you know, and then he uh, comes and pounces him late on when hopefully he's tiring up the straight. But, yeah, I just think um, all mankind, it might be one step too far here, and I do think he's very vulnerable tomorrow. The other two horses, who shot the sheriff, he wouldn't be for me. He's quite exposed now, I think, as a novice chaser. And Malistic, even though I do like the horse, I remember putting him up once or twice earlier this season, we've not seen him for a while, and I am slightly concerned about the trip. I think he's more of a two-miler myself. So I think Tamarock de Mathan tomorrow, by process of el elimination, is a good price at 15 to 8. And I think he will win this race tomorrow. So that's why he's going to be my nap in the 3 o'clock at air. We then go to the big feature race on the day there, uh, the 335 Scottish Grand National. This is where my long shot's going to be. And I'm going to go with Chapel Style uh, for uh, Ryan Day and Nicky Richards. Now this horse is currently at the time recording at 20 to 1 with William Hill, who are paying six places on the race and I'm going to recommend a 0 point each way selection. Now, I think this horse could be could have been laid out for the race, and obviously quite a few of them have, but if you really uh, look, sit down and look into this horse's profile, he really screams off the page to me. Now, he's got a nice low racing weight tomorrow. Horses that have uh, been running in this race in recent years off uh, low weights have got a really good record. It can be a hard ask to give lots of weight away, but uh, I think 
Devil style. Like I said, he's been laid out for this race. He's only uh, run over fences once this season, which suggests to me that they've been trying to protect his handicap mark. And that was actually his last run when he won at Carlisle, when he beat a few nice rivals that day in testing ground. I don't think the ground would have been in his favour that day. I think he'll prefer this better surface tomorrow. He's got some decent form on uh, on a better surface, including when he won at this meeting a couple of years ago when he won over hurdles uh, on good ground. So, yeah, I think there's a lot to like about his chances tomorrow. His current rating is 137, which I think is fair. And also, as well, if you look at his pedigree, he's, he screams out stamina. He's actually a half-brother to Raf Inden, who was a National Hunt chase winner at the Cheltenham Festival, and it used to be called the Four Miler. Uh, still is by some people. But, yeah, he won that race. And also, as well, he ran a cracker a couple of years ago behind Tiger Roll in the Grand National, you know. So he does have stamina abundance in his pedigree. And I think off a nice low race and weight. Nicky Richards won this race uh, last time. It was run with taking risks. I think he's identified a strong candidate for this race. And I think at 20 to 1, that's a really good each way price. I think a lot of the ones at the top of the market, in my opinion, are maybe slightly too high in the weights. Now, I write as a horse. I absolutely adore. I might have a saver on him, but I could see him getting tired up the home straight. I think he's had a quite hard season. And even though I don't think 154 is a disgraceful mark, I, 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 I do think... He might be slightly vulnerable to something else, given a lot of weight away now. So, yeah, I'm going to take him on. There's a couple of others being supported that I can see the case for, but I think maybe the likes of Mighty Thunder, who has been impressive, he could be a little bit high in the weights now. And there's one or two others like that that I think, even though they have been progressing, I think the handicapper might have them now, and they're not that well well in. So I think Chapel Star tomorrow, I think he's off a fair weight. Uh, he ticks a lot of the right boxes for me in this race. We know he's got the pedigree for it, and it looks like, as I said, the, the connections have been uh, plotting him all along this season with him just having one chase run and the fact that he's got the, the, the stamina in his pedigree. So yeah, lots to like about Chapel Star tomorrow and that's why he's going to be uh, my long shot of the day. 0.5 each way selection there. So there are the four tips for tomorrow's racing. If you're enjoying these videos, please remember to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe here to my YouTube channel of Lucky Loaders 15 Also as well, if you want to follow me on social media, like I said at the top of the video, uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter because that's the only place you can do so where my handle is at LuckyLoader15. And if you want to find out a little bit more about myself, my website is www.chrisloaderacing.co.uk so please gamble responsibly hopefully we can have a few winners tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon <laughs>